like an outlet, you know what I mean? I uh, was getting in trouble a lot. And actually, uh, at the time, um, I was going through the juvenile justice department, um, you know, situation. And my probation officer actually told me, hey, I heard you like to fight. You know, why don't uh, we, we take you down to a boxing room? Why don't you, what, what can we do? And we sat down and I was like, what is a game plan that's going to work so I don't have to see you again, you know, on a bad note? And uh, they took me down to the boxing gym. And from there, uh, went forward and, you know, kind of swept me uh, with from a uh, you know, failing student to uh, now I have to keep my grades up to box, you know, because that's what I wanted to do. And I remember just uh, doing, you know, not trusting myself uh, to stay focused or to, you know, resist temptation to get into something crazy, you know. So I would make myself run every day, every single day of the week, four, uh, you know, four miles every day and wait for the buses to leave and then jump on the last bus um, to get to the boxing gym. I go to the boxing gym, sleep for about an hour and a half, or do some homework. And uh, my coach at the time gave me a, um, she gave me a, the key, the code to the gym. And I would sleep in the basketball portion of the gym until she got there about four or five o'clock. And I uh, would be, you know, be there waiting for her. Either she would wake me up or I'd be doing homework. and. She would open it up for me. I would train there, and I'd be the last one out. She would have to actually shut the lights off to get me out of that boxing gym. Uh, actually, initially, I lived with my mother, and then we, you know, uh, me being young and having that high testosterone home, and uh, you know, just all the different little difficulties that I was having going on. I, uh, I actually left at 17, left the house before graduating high school, and I was staying, you know, from place to place, uh, with my, you know, different different uh, situations, you know, sometimes on couches and this and that. And my grandmother, who lived in Richmond, she told me, come on back, you know, come on back and stay with me. And I stayed with her for about two years, you know, we'll moved back to uh, my hometown, Richmond. Yeah, yeah, I definitely had to, uh, had to grow up fast, you know. Um, me and my mom, we had a rough, you know, it was just the two of us and uh, she had my sister. Uh, I mean, I, I had to take a, a large role in her upbringing so young, at 14 years old, you know, 13 years old. She was born when I want to say I was in the sixth grade and it was just the two of us, uh, uh, me, my mom, and my, my younger sister. And I had to, you know, man up and basically help my mom so she could go away and work at night, you know what I mean? I had to learn how to take care of the baby at a really young age, you know what I mean? And, uh, uh, you know, at times it didn't seem fair, but I look back now and I say, you know, it was preparing me for something, you know, another purpose that I had coming on later on in life. Uh, I, th I think that it, it never really clicked until, uh, it never really clicked, there was all that, always that desire that it's not good enough, you know what I mean, I'm not good enough, I would always see something, so it was never really the satisfaction of believing that there was something good until I, you know, obviously until uh, you know, right before I, you know, some years before I won the Olympic trials, I was like, okay, you belong here, you know what I mean, like, don't get satisfied, but there's something there, you know. I had a satisfaction problem, you know, you, you know I'm not satisfied, like that's kind of how um, how I, my mind is framed around it, like it wasn't, it's kind of never telling yourself you're good or never listening to nobody and when they say that you're good, you know, people will come up to you all the time and say, oh, that was great, that was great, but luckily I always had uh, coaches which were the first people to kind of help me frame my uh, thought process and, you know, my drive and they were, they at the time told me, uh, don't be satisfied, you know, hey, you know, when they tell you come and pat you on the shoulder and say you're good, then you tell them thank you and stuff like that, but you don't let that get to your head, and I really took that to heart. Actually, the represent, uh, representative for the United States, um, I uh, failed to qualify internationally by one fight, actually, a kind of contestable fight. With them introducing professional boxers into the Olympic process, uh, it made it very tight for the Olympic boxers, act, or the Olympic style boxers to actually qualify qualify for the Olympics, which doesn't sound like the, you know, it sounds pretty confusing, but because they um, introduced spots for professional boxers to compete in our, in our sport, basically it cut down on the amount of uh, fighters that, from Olympic boxing, who could actually qualify. So while every, every other weight class, when I went to the world qualifiers, had top four, which means, uh, you know, basically you have to medal. Uh, to qualify, my weight class, you had to be number one. And uh, I made it all the way to a third place bronze medal, which means that I lost a highly contested bout against the winner of uh, the, the whole thing. And so one more fight and I would qualify.
Uh, you know, again, it was I wasn't satisfied. You know, I had my goal, I had my heart's desires on, uh, you know, uh, making the, those games. Since I was a, since I was uh, started boxing, that's actually I found out that boxing was a way to the Olympics. And you know, I'd watch all these things. I watch the same tapes over and over and over about um, you know Vander Holyfield and all these guys that competed in the Olympics and I wanted that you know what I mean I wanted that and it was very hard to to walk away from you know kind of reframe my mind I'm a person who you know I think it, it's worked out that you you set short goals for yourself in in the in the um, in the range of a you know, longer bigger goal you know what I mean you kind of set short short blocks you kind of chop it up and so you know going to the Olympics was a part of one of those blocks you know what I'm saying <laughs> when the Olympic trials then going to the Olympics you know what I mean, doing the best you could do there and then going professional so that step right there kind of I had to reframe my mind now as a professional boxer and say it's time to get on you know it's time to get on and set your, your sights on new goals and new higher you know achievements that, that you can that you can uh, use the, the fuel which you didn't get from not being able to compete in those games uh, and use that in your professional career we never saw this coming we never saw this coming uh, I think that it's just amazing how um, how no matter you know uh, what what uh, what I do you know what I mean how many how many accomplishments I, 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 I attain still it's always a surprise to people you know it's a surprise for some reason you know these guys have been working this long but it's a surprise this happened and I think that that's how that's just what I'm learning to embrace you know that's just going to be a part of my identity is that it's gonna surprise people every time I do something. It's not gonna surprise me because I know the work that I've been putting in. I know how long I've been doing this. I know what type of team I have. But as far as on the radar, they just, you know, <laughs> it surprises them when I do something. I'm not sure. I don't, uh, maybe the way I carry myself, <laughs> it might be the way that I carry myself. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, the, uh, the loudest mouth in the room. And I think that uh, I was always taught it's, it's the quiet ones you gotta worry about. You know, it's not the loud mouth ones. They have something there. They're loud for a reason. They have to draw attention in there. They're shaking off something that they're lacking internally. Uh, that that's why they're so loud. You know, that that's their way. That's them their way of uh, shaking off nervous energy is being loud. That's a that's a social. You know, that's their social way of you know controlling the room to their satisfaction. While somebody quiet, they could care less.